Well, hello, Bishop Patrick L. Wooden Sr. here. Yes, I'm here at the Upper Room Church of God in Christ in our office uh, coming to you, getting ready, making preparations, excited about what God has to say to us tonight. My friends, the God of the Bible is yet on the throne. He's large and in charge. He rules and he super rules. And I want to tell you, I want to tell you right now, listen, don't, don't spend all day. Do not spend all day glued to the tube, listening to coronavirus, 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 coronavirus. The deaf told this, the deaf told that. So many are dying here, so many are dying there. To the point that that news uh, depresses you and you feel as though all is lost. Because the truth is, my friends, God is good. And he's on the throne and I'm not being in denial. And I know that there are hurting people out there and we are praying for you. We're praying for them. I know you're praying for me. I can feel your prayers and we're calling on the Lord for each other. But, uh, but let me tell you, when you pray, don't pray an empty prayer. Don't pray a prayer that is a ritual. Don't go through the motions. Don't pray a mindless prayer. Don't pray thinking, well, you know, nothing's going to happen anyway, but I'm, I, I guess I'm, I'll try this. No, our God hears, our God answers, and our God is good, and he is in charge. I had a call meeting, a conference call last night with the leaders and the pastors of North Carolina 3rd. We had a tremendous uh, uh, gathering, and uh, thank God for the pastors and the administrative staff, our supervisor, Supervisor Beverly DJ. Oh, she blessed us so well on the call. And it was a marvelous time. A passage of scripture that I shared with them that I would like to share with you uh, for the moment is found in the book of Malachi. Malachi chapter 3 and verse 16. It says, then they that feared, then they that feared the Lord spake often one to another and the Lord hearkened and heard it and a and a book of remembrance was written before him for them that feared the Lord and that thought upon his name. The book of Malachi, my friends, is a book that's written where God rebukes Israel. Uh, it took place over a hundred years after the temple had been built and uh, the golden age of the rebuilding of the temple had somewhat quietened down and some people had got discouraged. Israel had fallen into a backslidden state and uh, they had began to offer unfit sacrifices to the Lord on the on the altar. Uh, the preachers were not true, many of them, to the wife of their youth. The people began to rob God by failing to pay their tithe and offerings. And worst of all, they thought that God loved them because he had to and that he was obligated to and he had no choice. But the Lord let them know, listen, uh, I love you because I choose to love you. Uh, Esau have I loved, uh, Jacob have I loved, Esau have I hated, and Jacob and Esau were both sons of Isaac, who was the son of Abraham. So God's point was, I love you because I chose to. I'm a loving God and I want to bless you, but I want you to do right by me. But that was a group of people in the book of Malachi that represents my friends, you and me, and, the, and they are called they that fear the Lord. Fear the Lord is an idiom that means that people who live right, who walk up right, who serve the Lord out of their reverence and their respect for, their, for him and his glory and who he is. And here's what it says. They that fear the Lord spake often one to another. They gave expressions of love, listen to this, and fellowship. 
to, uh, with each other. Now, right now, right now, with the current distress that we're dealing with, we're not able to assemble the way we have before. But just because we cannot assemble, that doesn't mean that we cannot fellowship. And I tell you, I'm excited. I'm excited about the times when the day comes that we're able to gather together again. As you know, I do not consider even this medium uh, and what we're going to do tonight uh, as as the new normal. This is just as good as the way we used to do it. God haven't called us to gather in the church anyway. Yes, he has. David said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. There's a plethora of scriptures in the Bible where God calls the people together and encourage them to worship in the house of the Lord. Old Testament and new. But Due to the current distress, we've got to make the adjustments. But my friends, even though we cannot assemble right now, we will fellowship. We will speak to one another, whether through this medium or on the phone, however, through text, uh, uh, online, the various ways, the, the multiple ways of keeping in contact. And as believers, when we speak to each other, we encourage each other to keep the faith to look to the Lord. We pray for our government officials. We pray for uh, the scientists. We pray for those who are working to find uh, a cure uh, or, or a vaccine or something to this, uh, uh, this virus and this pandemic that is going on. But we look to the Lord. And we know that the God of the Bible is going to deliver us, but uh, we got to, we got to speak words that keep one another encouraged. Uh, the, the truth is saints, we are all that we have other than Jesus Christ. The world, the world is promoting depression and, and different things like that. There are people who have a vested interest in making sure that you just lose your joy and you, you give up and, and you not be optimistic and you not be cheer, cheery and you not be a realist believing that the God of the Bible knows what he's doing. Well, I'm not one of them. I want to encourage you to lift up your head. I want to encourage you to talk to somebody who can encourage you. If uh, Don't get on the phone with a bunch of sad sacks and they're, they're all wondering, what are we going to do? All is lost. Oh my God, what are we going to do? I know what we're going to do. We're going to serve the Lord. We're going to talk to each other. We're going to keep each other encouraged. And notice in this 16th verse, it mentions that they feared the Lord twice. And it also mentions that while they were speaking to one another, guess what happened? The Lord took notice. God noticed how the saints were encouraging the saints. And God wrote down their acts in his royal book of remembrance, in his royal archives. I want to live during this thing where the Lord will archive uh, uh, our actions and the things that we are doing and have done, uh, preaching the word, feeding the hungry, delivering food, doing the things that we do as a ministry, encouraging the saints, reminding you that the God of the Bible is on the throne. I pray that God is pleased with our response. I pray that God is pleased with yours and that he's writing it in a book of remembrance. Remembrance, and it says uh, he's going to do this for them that fear the Lord. And look at this, that thought, I'm, I'm wrapping this up. I'm not going to preach about this tonight, but I want to share this with you. It says them that thought upon his name. That is them that meditated upon his name. Now, when I go off today, turn that television off, turn off all of that, uh, that Corona uh, coverage and get in a quiet place and meditate on the name of the Lord esteeming as your highest prize, your, the highest prize that they had during those times in Malachi and it's true today, it's true tomorrow, that their highest prize was the name of the Lord. 
go somewhere and just concentrate on the name of Jesus. Glory to God. How sweet he is. I felt something when I called his name. Jesus, Jesus. Oh, that sweet name. Why do you think in so many Hollywood movies they 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 use they they swear by using calling the Lord's name in vain at least three or four times per movie? They want to overuse it. They want to they want to um, uh, abuse it. They want to take the luster out of it. They want to take the power out of it. Well, I'm here to say you can't. It cannot be done. There is power. In the name of Jesus, healing power, soothing power, revi reviving power, power to lift you up, power, praise the Lord, to give you hope for another day, power to enable you to cope in times like these. So, my friends, meditate, concentrate, think on, do a little study on the name of Jesus. Oh, my Lord, the songwriter said, it's like pure, precious gold. It's like fire in winter's cold. Jesus, just the mention of your name. The late, great Timothy Wright, I believe his wonderful wife, she's in heaven along with him. They, they wrote the song, Jesus, 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 Jesus. Jesus. And I love it when we sing it. I, I throw in my little, the sweetest name I know, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. So I'm going off. I'll see you tonight. I'll be here at the Upper Room Church of God in Christ. We're going to be teaching the Word. I want to tell you what I want to teach you about tonight. It has to do with your mind and your thinking and your, 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 your toughness and how God is going to keep you during these times. How we're not going to allow the devil to break our spirits. And when this is all over, we'll be able to look back on it and tell a story of victory. How the Lord took us through and brought us out. Now we're praying for those who have suffered losses. We're praying for those who are laid off. Oh, these are, these are some challenging times. I'm not making light of it. I'm not making light of it. But you have your choices of people who are bewildered. Got that deer in the, uh, 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 caught in the headlights look in their eyes and who specialize in bringing, bringing you down. Not me. Not me. We are going to stand together through this thing and the Lord is going to bring us out. Now I'm done. Uh, uh, Brother Gary, I get carried away. I get carried away. I get excited about it. But uh, uh, I've gone. Listen, join me tonight for... Bible study. Now, you know you can't join me live, but you can tune in. You know you can't come to the church. You know, they, <laughs> they cut that out. They cut that out. Uh, I didn't want to go to jail, so I figured I better shift <laughs> and do this. But let me tell you something. Uh, I want to say to all of the saints, uh, so many of you have contacted me. You have, you have, you have made my heart glad. I was so grateful to the saints' response to last Thursday night and last Sunday, how the people celebrated the word of God, how you tuned in, how you spread the word, how you helped the word get out. And I want to thank God for those who text me and said, Bishop, when I saw that we couldn't gather in the sanctuary, I cried. I wept. I'm glad that we have members who would cry, who would weep because they couldn't come to church. Many people now cry because they have to. I'm glad for the upper room members, the saints. We have some good people here. And uh, uh, I want you to know we're, we're working on uh, uh, Deacon Miller, our Sunday school superintendent here at the church, said, Bishop, I'm ready to teach Sunday school. So we're working on how we can teach Sunday school and, uh, 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 the, the, and, and use technology to, to start up our Sunday school classes also. So I'm excited. It's, it's, it's good. It's good. God's got us. Now, um, until tonight, for Bible study, I'll see you right here. And I'm going out with uh, one word, but I want to say it to you four times. Maybe five. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Oh, what a name. I know you feel it. I know you feel the power. But there's power in that name. Meditate on it. 
It is our highest prize. There is no other name under the heavens given among men whereby we might be saved. Jesus. I'll see you tonight for Bible study.